All right, hello everyone, and welcome to a server storage upgrade video. This is getting shot a little bit out of order, so I might it might be a little weird. Uh, but uh, I'll put a screenshot up. As you can see, my server is running out of space. Uh, it's still not too bad right now, but you know, given time, that's gonna fill up. Uh, probably have a few more months before it was full. Um, but all of those are basically just single 5400 RPM 2 terabyte drives. And with my 10 gig network upgrade, uh, it's you actually notice now how slow hard drives are, especially since my workstation gaming rig whatever is all SSDs. So, I am upgrading my server storage. Um, so you might notice that this is just a regular spinning hard drive, and that's correct. So what I've already done, and I'll probably put bits of the video footage over this as I talk, uh, is I've taken, um, uh, basically I've grabbed a WD Black uh, NVMe SSD, and I put that into a PCI Express adapter card, and that's going to be used with Windows storage spaces and these 5 terabyte drives. Uh, as an NVMe cache for it. Uh, well, it's it's not a cache, it's tiered storage, so I'll gain the extra 460 gigabytes or so, um, and then the stuff that's frequently used will be on the NVMe drive, and then stuff that will be slower will be moved to the 2.5-inch, uh, 5-terabyte drives. Uh, so, as I mentioned, drives. Uh, I These were on sale, and it was still pretty painful, um, but I bought three of them. So I'll have 10 terabytes of capacity, with single drive failure capacity, uh, as well as a 460 gig NVMe cache of fast stuff. Um, now, if you're familiar with the DL380G6 at all, you'll know that it's PCI Express 2.0, uh, NVMe SSDs need 3.0, but I'm still getting around 1.6 gigs a second, sequential read and write, 1.5 to 1.6. Um, and the, like the IOPS in terms of compared to a regular SATA SSD are way better. I actually originally tried this with a single drive and a SATA SSD. And I was getting actually bottlenecked by the SSD still because it's on just, you know, on a 6 gigabit per second interface. But I wasn't reaching the full speeds. So NVMe it was. So I bought one of these brand new. They had a limit um, of one per customer. And then I bought two of the Amazon warehouse deals ones. Uh, which is maybe a little sketchy because it's a hard drive, but that was the only way to do it. Um, and the first one I opened up seems pretty good. They were also 10 bucks cheaper. So I was actually arguing not to do it internally before. Um, and then I only had, could buy one of the regular ones. So uh, yeah, this one's actually in better shape than the other one in terms of packaging. The other one had tape around the bottom and stuff. This one doesn't. <clears throat> this one actually might be just like something that was returned because looking at it it's pretty new this one also had some bits of dust in it and stuff uh, let's take a look at this one here oh you know what this one does have dust inside of this packaging as well so that was probably opened up at some point it's got the same sort of perfumey smell that this one did. Um, so I'm guessing the same person bought like two of them and then decided not to do it. And I'll keep this packaging, I'll show you why. But I'm also going to show you how to shuck these drives. Because you can shuck these. Uh, Western Digital hard drives, the portable ones, have a USB 3 interface built onto the board uh, of the hard drive, so you can't use them. But these Seagate ones use, still use a really nice slim... Uh, slim SATA board. So we'll go ahead and open this up and then I'm actually going to hook it up over USB and check the uh, just like quick information on it and then we will cut back to this but this is number two no real scratches or anything like that that still looks pretty good. So let's go check this one out. So the first used drive here has a power on time of four days and eight hours And nothing immediately jumps out as being bad in smart. So I might run some extended tests on these. We'll see. 
Okay, so this one's even better. 19 hours on time. Uh, start stop time uh, count of only 9. A couple degrees lower temp, nothing jumping out as smart data. So that's pretty good. That one's almost brand new. Uh, and the other one, uh, slightly used, still really good. So as you saw, that's um, pretty good. That worked out pretty nicely. Uh, so one of them has a four day on time, one of them has only 19 hours. So those are two pretty nice drives. I'm guessing from the same person because of the smell and the packaging and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have the packaging in the same ones. And we'll go over how you actually shuck these. Um, so one thing also, just a comparison note, uh, size difference versus the last generation of them. A little teeny bit bigger. And from what I recall, this has nicer packaging inside than this one. So it's a little bulkier, but I think the protection should be better. Actually, there's a bit of a dent there. That's not good. You can see that. Um, but yeah, I might take this apart to compare, but it was basically rubber bumpers around it. Um, I like the design of having this slot there versus the little dot. I prefer the old one. I also like this metallic cover on them better than the brushed. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll also mention drives above two terabytes in two and a half inch form factors like this are all shingled magnetic. That's why you want a, a tiered SSD storage. Um, and even though I'm not getting full speed on my NVMe SSD in my server, uh, what it will give me is the ability to hit it full speed over 10 gig, and it'll still be able to write stuff to the drive at the same time, and I shouldn't notice it. It should be able to do both at the same time quite easily. So to shock the drive, these ones are a little more difficult to do. You need to start basically just with a little exacto knife to get the edge up. And the goal when you're doing this is to not mark up the case too much so that if you need to do a warranty claim or something you can stick it back in. Oh, shit. These ones are a little chilly, so the glue is probably a bit more well set. But yeah, on the last one I found getting an exacto knife really go in the corner. Yeah, and then you can slide it down. Get something a little more substantial in there. So this whole side is basically stuck down. Hitting these with a hair dryer would um, would help a fair bit, I think. But I don't have a hair dryer, so. I got my hot air station. So you don't want to be too rough on these because aluminum does bend. Alright, there we go. So the two clips on this side came undone. You can start to see the rubber bumpers inside. And then what you want to do is just work your way there. And then you'll see the these corners are coming up a little bit, so you can actually try to just push straight up there. It's kind of a three-handed operation. Right. So these are actually clipped in. There are clips on the metal that you basically want to get pushed away from the plastic. So you want to make yourself a little gap. I am slightly rushing this. This is the sort of thing where patience is better. And again, heating the whole thing up with uh, like a hair dryer would probably be good. Now 
And when you're doing this, don't press on the sides or you're going to basically push the clips in. Ah, there we go. Okay, there's one. I should also get some new spudgers because this one is really not doing too well. That's definitely not helping. And if I go for the knife more. Okay, that clip is fully out now, and you can see there's a seam starting around. So that'll be our spot to get in. Pop the rest of them. All right, that's the one side done. Or just about. There are also some of these same clips along the top. Finally, we have the last side. So yeah, this is, again, like I mentioned, this is really thin aluminum, so don't push on it too much. Ah, but there we go. That's open. And that's not really bent too much at all. So if you put that back together, I don't think they noticed too much if you needed to do a warranty claim if you had an, like an infant death on this. Uh, one thing you might want to make note of is the position of these colored tabs. Uh, those might be checked. I, I don't know what sort of their warranty process is like. Then you can take your spudger. You just need to sort of get this thing started coming out. Because it is basically fit in there about as tight as you can. That might actually be a better option. Hang on, let's see. So I undo these two. So I just sort of fall out. Ah, there we go. All right, so we have our five terabyte drive with this little USB 3 adapter card. And so we can pull off the rest of these. And then you want to be somewhat careful on doing this aluminum. That way, like I mentioned, if something go does go wrong, you need to put it back together. You can get it to be reasonably close to how it was. Although, honestly, like this stuff, reapplying it is it's going to be wrinkly no matter what. It's also not a good idea to cut your nails super short before you do this. Yeah, see like right there I got a rip. Okay, there's another one. This one's not going too smoothly. All right, and so you can see the adapter board now. These are basically the same in all of them. And so there you have a little tiny USB 3 adapter PCB, your case, and a 5 terabyte shingled magnetic 2.5 inch hard drive. Um, 
So what I like to do is mark the serial number on the drive down on this, that way it matches, um, and then put it into a caddy. So that we can just, also these are full thickness, like 15 millimeter or so drives. So they might not work in things like laptops, depending how big your laptop is. But honestly, 15 terabytes or five terabytes on a laptop is uh, a little on the excessive side, I think. <laughs> All right, and there we have it. We have one of the five terabyte hard drives in a caddy. I already have one of these in my server. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make up the second one and then we can pump these bad boys in. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'll do long testing on these. I'm kind of tempted to skip it. It would be good, I guess. But yeah, that's um, a really nice high density uh, form factor of storage that's somewhat affordable compared to trying to buy multi-terabyte SSDs, especially when you're getting to like the four terabyte range. All right, so um, I'll mention I don't close these all the way when I'm done with them, but there we have our second drive. So that right there is 10 terabytes of storage. And then there's one more on the server as well as that 500 gig NVMe SSD that I will be using as faster tiered storage. So let's go ahead and put these in. It's really nice holding like multiple hard drives at once because usually, usually I only upgrade one at a time. So nothing too special here. I have the first drive. That's my brand new one in that slot. One thing not using a SATA SSD, it kind of sucks because I'm going to have empty spots. I like the idea of filling up all of these and then maybe all of the other side again later, but oh well. So there we have our 15 terabytes of storage with that NVMe SSD in there as well. So time to start doing some software.